Eliza Blanche uh, D. Her nickname was Milbank. She holds the special honor of being the oldest and the youngest, not at the same time. But I want to tell you a little bit about her story. She was born in February. Her, her family decided that they wanted to move to Kansas. They lived in Newport. And so they made passage to be able to, to cross the ocean, come over to Kansas. But there was a strike that took place. And so they were not able to go the way that they had planned. So they had to go another way. They had to take uh, worse seats than what they were supposed to have. And so they came over later. Um, while they were crossing over, um, there was a disturbance that happened on the boat. Her dad was up on the top of her deck. And uh, he noticed something was going on. Because they were third class passengers, their possibility of being rescued were very limited. But because her dad found out what was going on, recognized that something was wrong, he hurriedly went down, got his wife and his two children prepared, and got them to the front of the line, the lifeboats, which probably saved their lives. Her dad never left. Perished. But there was the remnant that survived. She was the youngest person to survive. She was eight weeks old on April 15th, 1912. When the ship went down. What I found very interesting about, oh, by the way, she was also the oldest one to survive. She didn't die until 2006. So she lived a long time. So she was the youngest and the oldest. But what I found interesting about this is what the article said is that because she was only two years old, I mean, bitty, bitty, she was two years old, two, two months old, two months old, because she was only two months old when she was put on the rescue ship. Because all their belongings were they were planning to move to Kansas. Everything they had in this world was wiped out. And so they decided to go back to England, where at least they knew some people could get some help. So they decided to go back to England on the ship. She was passed around from survivor to survivor. And it said that when the people held her, they saw hope. They saw hope in this new life. Even the crew members of the boat that rescued them, because they saw all the tragedy was there. They also held her and said, there is hope, because there was a remnant that was saved. There was a remnant that was saved. God always saves a remnant. Jesus saves. Not everyone will be saved, but there is people who will be saved. We begin to praise God for what he is doing and what he has done. Jesus invited people to follow him. But one thing he never did was Jesus did not and he does not force people to follow him. They have to say that. I wish I could take some people and I could dump them under the water and say, you're baptized, now you're going to heaven. But it doesn't work. Romans 9 is a chapter of reality. Not a book to me. It's also a chapter of hope because there's a remnant that's being saved. And another thing that Paul doesn't do is he doesn't blame himself. He says, I would do everything possible if I could get those people to be saved. But Jesus is already done that. No, it's up to them. And I wanted to leave you with a message that it's not your fault. It is not your fault. Don't blame yourself. Don't condemn yourself. The other thing is that God loved the King And whether, whether they become a Christian during the time we are alive or not, like Paul, we can't give up on them. We need to continually pray. We need to continually encourage 
without becoming bitter or harsh to them. We need to love them so much that they want to become a part of that love. That's what will happen to see God. If we can show God's love. We can count on God's love. Praise God that there's a man. Praise God that you're a part of it. Praise God that others will be kind. Be touched. Be influenced. Praise God. That's love. You hear the gentle voice of Jesus calling tenderly upon your head. You hear him calling you, letting you know that we earnestly, with all of our heart, want you to become a part of the kingdom. If we might help, you, won't you let us know? Or we stand the same. Heard the gentle voice of Jesus.